Now, I understand uh, you had a hand in founding an organization called The Mangrove. Uh, what exactly were, were its, its activities? Well, The Mangrove was actually um, uh, sort of a, a, a coalition. It was an idea rather than an organization. It was a, um, uh, a coordination body that was created by both the non-governmental and the state sector in, in the uh, eastern district of Vatiklo, which was... Um, is that which the is hardest hit area by the tsunami? Oh, well, one of, the, one of the, the badly hit ones, yes. Uh, and essentially, uh, the, the body had three main functions. One was to try and coordinate the services that existed in the, in the, in the area, but also that were flooding in. Uh, when there's this very generous but somewhat chaotic outpouring of assistance uh, after the tsunami. Um, so it was about trying to um, marshal those resources and make sure that they were distributed and equitably and that they also met certain sort of minimum standards uh, in, as far as support provision went. The second was about um, trying to uh, build the skills of people who were providing services. Very often there was a lot of goodwill, but not necessarily much experience. Um, and trying to link people up with those who were more experienced, who had, who had skills to share, um, to be able to ensure that there would be good quality services and services that perhaps would be sustained over time. And the last um, element was really that we tried very, the, the, the network of the, the coalition was really around mental health and psychosocial support, we realized that a number of the things that impacted very strongly on people's ability to cope and their psychosocial well-being or their mental health actually lay outside of, of the, the, the remit of our field. It was about housing. It was about um, being able to return to one's uh, lands or the, the management of um, displaced persons' camps. So there was a lot of um, let's say, intersectoral cooperation and lobbying that went on to make sure that, let's say, women living in camps had private spaces within which they could bathe and change, um, which is something that wasn't necessarily always a top priority for some of the um, engineers putting in the, uh, the bathing wells or, the, or the, uh, the toilets, for example. Now, with being too clinical, is there, how, what what is the difference between treating war victims and victims of natural disasters? Well, there's a lot of overlap in terms of the support that one um, might provide. Because a lot of the problems are similar. But I think one of the key, the fundamental differences is that um, natural disaster um, does not have an intentionality behind it, whereas very often the losses sustained by people in conflict uh, are perpetrated by other people, or well, maybe inadvertently, but, but they're perpetrated by other people. And therefore, really? yes, and therefore there, is, um, there are issues around um, anger, rage, hatred, um, uh, which, which become quite central to people's understandings of what has happened to them and, and need to be negotiated in the process of recovery or um, moving forward. So that makes the work a lot more uh, complex in, in, in many regards. Between the war torn, the victims of, of war and victims of natural disasters? I think in some ways, yes. You have made Batikaloa in eastern Sri Lanka as your base. Is it because your expertise is more needed there, or given the tsunami and the concentration of the conflict in that area? What brings you to all the way out there? Well, um, as I, I said I, I, um, earlier, I, I wound up going to Batika almost by accident um, in, in response to the tsunami. Um, I'm by nature someone who, who is not very territorial. I don't see my work as being link, limited to one area alone. But I found it very useful, um, certainly working in Batiklo, uh, as, I, as has been working in other places, to spend a degree of time in one place. Because the longer you stay, the longer, the more you understand, the, your depth of understanding of how things change and how, um, as circumstances change, 
the way in which people cope or the difficulties that people have also evolve uh, has been very useful for me. And so um, I'm, I'm, I continue to try and contribute to sustainable and, and long-term uh, development of services in that area. And I'm working particularly in the area of um, looking at um, mental health services within the state sector at the moment. But um, what I see is that I'm, I'm really benefiting a lot in terms of understanding what needs to be put in place immediately after an emergency that's going to last five, ten years after, after that fact. Um, so Batiklo may not remain my base. I've been working there for about, about four years now. Um, but, uh, but it's certainly um, a place where there, there are needs. Um, but it's also a base from which I think one can develop knowledge and, and good models of work, which then can be shared and taken to other places within Sri Lanka, but also um, in the region. You also teach. What do you teach? Um, well, teaching is something that perhaps I'm not <laughs> a natural at, but I've, I've learned, I'm, I'm trying very hard to, um, to develop skills in this area uh, because I'm, I think it's very important that we in Sri Lanka um, build capacity to um, respond to the wide range of psychosocial and mental health needs we have in this country. Um, I think about 10 years ago when I started in this field, uh, the numbers, the, the, the capacity that we had within Sri Lanka was somewhat limited. In many ways, uh, the situation is very different now. And we've got a lot more homegrown expertise, uh, which I think is, is an excellent um, thing. But some of the, we need to have some engines to, to produce this uh, homegrown expertise. And, and one of them, um, which I'm very proud to be uh, associated with, is a, is a uh, postgraduate diploma at the University of Colombo here in, uh, in the city, um, which is, uh, provides people with skills in psychosocial intervention and also with, in counseling. But similarly, I'm also involved with some courses uh, in the east of the island, the Eastern University, which let's say aim for people with slightly less um, academic achievement, but who are very important in delivering services, certainly in the periphery. Um, one of the things that I'm also particularly excited about at this point is that we're starting to see possibilities for training and shared learning across uh, countries in, in Asia. Um, and just this last week, I've been um, discussing and setting the groundwork with some colleagues for a course that's going to bring together some of the um, active figures in this field um, in the South Asian region who really haven't had much of an opportunity to teach each other what they've learned and what they've developed to try and bring together in a sense to share that learning um, and benefit from the experience and wisdom that others have, have uh, gathered.